Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in the Alps. And over 40 years ago, I came to this area as part of my PhD to try and understand the thrusting processes which have stacked the crust up here, ultimately to make the mountains. And I've come back here to have a look at part of the area that I worked. Well, the area I want to revisit is actually that ground over there where we've got that big slabby mounted place called the Aigui de la Penaz and beyond it where the clouds are beginning to spill around is a ridge of crystalline basement. And I want to reinvestigate the relationship between basement and cover because now that I'm retired I've got a bit of time to revisit the Alps. So we're in the shadow of Mont Blanc, a region known as Beaufortaine. So it's time for some geological context. Basement rocks, that's crust that predates Mesozoic sedimentary rocks, the Mont Blanc Massif, and to its southwest, the so-called internal Belladon. We're in the ground between them, sedimentary rocks, Trias in orange, Jurassic in blue. And these strata are stacked up in the Aiguille de la Penaz with a detached slice of basement Roslet. This is our mission, to understand this patch on the map of basement. So let's go and see. On a misty autumn day with early morning frost. Well, these grey rocks here, where the path signs are, those are Jurassic limestones. But the hill right at the top, with a bit of cloud whisking over it, that's crystalline basement. It's got a green tinge because of the lichen that grows on it. So we've got a major thrust contact running through there, more or less where that snow peters out against the steeper ground on top, running through here. It's a major thrust structure. And you could chase this thrust right along the foot of the cliffs there, underneath the peak there that's collecting some cloud. Well, anyway, let's go and check out these rocks. Well, these are some pretty deformed limestones. Veins that are really strung out, folded. An intense platiness, so strongly sheared. Jurassic rocks in the foot wall to the thrust. These are myelinitic with a strong mineral alignment of strung out calcite which gives us the axis of shearing east-southeast, west-northwest. So when we look side on, we can identify asymmetric structures that imply top to the west-northwest. And this is our inferred thrusting direction. So, I've walked along the path down there beneath those lower crags, which are highly deformed limestones. A bit of sheared black shale in there as well. And I've come up into the thrust sheet and the thrust itself lies on that terrace there with a little pine tree. So we're up in the thrust sheet. Let's see what it's made of.
So this is crystalline basement. And it's difficult to see from the top surface here because it's covered in lichen. But on fresh surfaces, we can see it's got this intense sort of thin Nisic banding defined by strung out quartz and felspar. So it's a high temperature fabric. Classic external basement of the Alps. And uh, these high grade fabrics were acquired not in the Alpine orogeny, but in the Variscan, so pre-Triassic deformation. Not much sign of Alpine retrogression, so it's been emplaced as a pretty much intact sheet or slab of basement rocks. So, a basement thrush sheet. So that's the Aegis de Roselet, and so, perhaps unsurprisingly, this is called the Roselet Clipper. It's a clipper because it's an isolated remnant of a once overlying thrush sheet. And here's the cross section from my PhD research. Building it up, this is the Roselet Clipper. Below, a hydroelectric water tunnel gives extra information encountering the noses of basement slices. And these continue to the east, right up to the big slice, the Mont Blanc Massif. I propose that Roslet linked back to Mont Blanc. A thrust went right over the Penaz limestones. So on my map, coloured up basement and that tunnel. The Roslet Clipper A patch of basement here. We've seen the thrust here, so let's trace it south around the clipper. So these are Jurassic limestones but you can see how plated they are they're really sheer they're essentially myelinites it's not surprising because just up there we either go into basement and back across that thrust so those green rocks there they're the basement Continuing around the corner, we see the rocks that lie east of the Roslet Clipper. Looking into the stacked limestone of Penaz. Well, disappearing up into the clouds. That's a great pile of repeated Jurassic limestones. It's the Aegis de la Penaz. So these are the limestones just underneath our thrust. But if we look across the valley, we can see just catching some sunshine, green rocks, and on top, some cream material. Well, the cream rocks are these limestones that come round to here. So the basement is the basement to these limestones. So what happens to the thrush sheet of basement that sits on top? Well, let's just look up this valley. Well, these are our limestones again. Here's the basement of the thrush sheet sitting on top. And we can take it around the quarry up into the clouds there, which is the thrush sheet. 
But up to the col, well that's interesting. We got limestones on the far side, basements on the other. The basement doesn't come across. So let's just sketch that up. There's a little profile across here. Here's the view. Roslet and Penaz. The lower basement and its overlying cover of Jurassic limestones over to here, where above lies basement, the thrust sheet. So onto a sketch section. This is what we've got. And back in the 1980s, this is how I interpreted things. The Roslet clipper cut off at the back, breaching a once continuous thrust that ran over the entire area. And on the map, this is the line of section which is just over the ridge. The Roslet clipper. The underlying stacked basement below the limestones. And I tied the clipper back to the Mont Blanc massif. The clipper is now isolated from the massif because a later thrust has shoved the Penaz limestones upwards. So when I mapped this originally, I proposed that the thrust sheet came right over everything and then it had been essentially breached, chopped through by thrusts that climb out through that coal, carrying the limestones up over the basement. But maybe there's some other alternatives that we can use as well to interpret this section. Let's get up to the coal and have a look at the key ground on the back of the clipper. So now that I'm at the coal, let's take a look, see which ideas work here. So there are Jurassic strata plastered up against the side of the basement. The basement being right at the top there. So we've got a fault structure and material splattered against the fault. Okay, well, let's sketch that up. So this structure here is much more plausibly a buttressed normal fault. So the basement of the Roselet unit is a piece of basement that lies in the footwall to a normal fault and it's been trimmed off and carried by the thrust, a so-called footwall shortcut. French geologists call these basement slices that have been trimmed off like this, Ile Flottante. So different ways of interpreting this geology. These ideas of structural inheritance, the role of pre-existing normal faults as influences on the structure of Alpine mountain building, were developed and extensively applied from the mid to late 1980s, so that these days, the exclusively thrusty interpretations, such as I proposed originally, are no longer in vogue. Indeed, these extra complexities are now routinely interpreted in mountain ranges around the world. So it's important not to be too precious about particular interpretations of orogenic structure. The challenge now is to take this new interpretation and see how it upscales to understand the larger scale structure, not just of Bofotain, but of this part of the external Alps. But that's for another visit. Well, it's been an interesting revisit. And I guess the message is, it's always good to revisit your old ideas in the light of new ideas and new information.